Understanding AWS EC2 Pricing When you choose to run a virtual server in the cloud using Amazon EC2, you have three pricing models that you can use. On Demand, Reserved, or Spot. Now most people start with On Demand. Simply because it's so simple. You come to the AWS Management Console, EC2, you launch an instance, choose what you want. Let's say I want, uh, I want Windows Server 2008 with SQL on it. I click on that, I say what size of server, you know, I want, I want an 8 core, 68 gigs of RAM, you know, quadruple extra large, you know, this giant server. And, and Amazon's system behind the scenes says, okay, based on the instance types, uh, based on the, the software and everything else that's on that instance, here is your on-demand price per hour. So that'll be $2 an hour or $1 an hour, wh whatever, it, you know, it all is based on all those factors that come together. So if you were going to graph that out over time, it actually ends up being pretty boring because here's your, here's your expense. It looks like this. It's just like, hey, it's, you know, it's $2 an hour or $1 an hour for, for uh, you know, forever, as long as you keep that instance running. The beauty of on-demand is its flexibility. If somebody's just getting started with AWS, I'm, I'm saying you're, you're on-demand. You know, try it out. Go two, three, six months. Make sure that this is all right and, and it's, it's working well for you because you can shut those things off and walk away. It's a, it's a non-commit. You just pay for what you use. Great. But what about if I'm thinking, okay, AWS is awesome. It works for me. Let's deploy a cluster of servers and all these different data centers. Is there a way of getting better pricing? Yes. Uh, reserved instances. It's a combination of what I just showed you, you know, the server size, the software, all that, plus a time frame. So I say, okay, I'm going to commit to run that server at that size for one year or three years. Those are the current time frames that are allowed. And what happens is Amazon comes back and says, okay, we're going to reward you for committing for a year and putting, here's the other factor, and putting a down payment on it, let's say $1,000. We're going to give you an hourly rate far less than the on-demand instance. If you've ever bought a house, this is the same thing as buying down your mortgage on a house. So you can say, I want a 30-year mortgage and no down payment. And in the end, you'll pay a lot more for that house than if you would say, I want a 30-year mortgage and I'm putting down $10,000 to kind of pay down that mortgage. Same thing here. So the graph for reserve looks a little more fun because you get to see something like this. Shroom. Over time, over that one year or that three year, you start seeing a return. Here's, here's the end of, your, end of your time. You're going to see a return to where this ends up being far less than the on-demand pricing would have been. Beauty of on-demand, flexibility. You can walk away. Beauty of reserved, if you know this is for you and you're with Amazon, then you get a better price in the long haul. Where most of the confusion comes in, and rightly so, it's weird, is spot. Spot is this weird combination of everything that I've, I've just thrown out there to where it's the server size, it's the operating system and all that, and then throw in a little casino gambling. I'm serious. That's, that's kind of how the game works. Here's the idea. Amazon at all their data centers has extra processing powers. They're, they're not all at 100% capacity 100% of the time. That just wouldn't work. So, so Amazon's going, okay, we got this extra processing power out there that's going idle. What do we do with it? Let's let people bid on it. So I could say, you know what, I want, I, here's, here's the idea of spot pricing. I want a quad, quad core 16 gigs of RAM server that will be able to process my, my uh, video, video processing. And I'm willing to pay two cents an hour for it, which is insane. That's just an amazing hourly rate. Two cents an hour. And you know what? I'll get it. If, here's the if, no one else outbids me. Ah, the gambling game to where I walk out and I say, okay, I'm willing to pay two cents an hour. And as long as nobody else for that data center has chosen two cents an hour, I'm going to get it. But the minute, I'm serious, the minute somebody outbids you, boom, your machine goes down. Whoa. Okay. So what I'm talking about here, we've got our region and here's all our availability zones, our data centers within there. I put a uh, two cents an hour uh, bid on this guy and I get it. I, and I, I, my machine boots up and now does what I needed to do. Maybe it's processing through video, churning through rendering, all that kind of stuff. And that's what spot pricing is good is for these, these processing tasks that could be cut off at any minute and then just pick up. You know, for instance, a, a number of years ago, there was the SETI program, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, where it was a big distributed processing where you would just churn through these star charts trying to find aliens. And I don't know if they ever did. But nonetheless, that would have been great for this kind of thing to where, to where we've, we've got... Uh, a spot instance that's when it's two cents a minute. Okay, we're processing extraterrestrials. Okay, now, oops, somebody just outbid you. 
boom, your machine gets uh, literally cut off. Like, oh, there it goes. It, it's, it's done. Uh, and now, now the other machine takes over. So spot pricing is, is definitely good for those needing on-demand processing power for non-critical data. Again, churning through video is the perfect thing. You got 16 terabytes of video you got to render. Not too big of a time frame on it, but you want the best price. That's where the spot pricing fits in. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.